Good day, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. Um, another rifle today. But we're going to have a look. At, we're going to continue this uh, load, little load development, load testing series, whatever you want to call it, that I've been doing on all a couple of different rifles I've got. One thing we've learned in this COVID scandemic, um, you've got to have a couple of different loads for your rifle. You use one, it's all well and good. One day you go to the gun shop and you won't be able to get stuff. Then you're up shit creek. So um, if you get a, a, a and any way you can do it. When you go to the gun shop, you see some stuff, buy it. You've just got to get what you want and just sit on it if you have to. I mean, that's that's just the way it is because these these supply issues, um, it's not going to get that much better for a little while. It'll pick up again. When, of course, something will happen again and bring it all back and we'll be back to where we were. So that's one little lesson we've had to learn out of this. Oh, and how to pay a heap more money for everything. So that's another lesson we've, we've also learned. But be that as it may, today we've got in front of us a uh, Weatherby Vanguard chambered in 204 Ruger. Um, Standard Vanguard, nice fiberglass stock, uh, topped with a Vortex uh, Crossfire 2, 3 to 9 by 40 scope, some Vortex Pro Series rings, and a Nico Sterling pick rail. Um, one of my dad's old guns, they're a lovely little gun to shoot. Um, one of the little tiny projectile high speed things, good for vermin, uh, sorry, vermin control and all that sort of thing. They got really popular here for a while, the Roo shooters got onto them, and then they just went back to the 223. So the 204. They can be sometimes a much maligned calibre, but I like them. I like them. They're a bit fiddly to load, but that's life. So um, we, we've done some load testing with it, and uh, I'll, I'll show you the results now. I don't want, didn't want to take you out to the range because how much you can see how excited it's going bang. But anyway, strap in. We'll have a look. Uh, we'll have a look what, what uh, the results this thing showed, and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, the recipe cookbook. ADI two two o six H powder. Why do I use ADI? There's always a myriad of other powders you can use for these little things. I like ADI because, number one, you can get it. Simple as that. You can get the stuff in most of the shops, and it's, it's quite reasonably priced. And, again, supply issues. Like I've, and I've had no issues uh, no issue with the quality of ADI powder and in the, the different sorts I use, so I'll stick with it. Winchester Small Rifle Primers. Again, you can get them. They're around. That's what I use. I personally don't think in hunting ammo, your primer makes a whole hell of a lot of difference. There's probably gonna be people who disagree with me, but that's not a debate I'm overly interested in having. It goes bang, it shoots straight. That's all I'm interested in. And the two projectiles I'm gonna be loading today are these, these Wink, uh, sorry, Hornady VMAX, uh, 20 caliber in a 32, uh, 32 grain. They're a little uh, flat base, red nosed little beastie. I'll try and get him up, they're so, they're so small. They're so small, see if I can hold him there, they're dropping him, there he is. And they, they are a nice little thing. They're, they're a load up really nice, really consistent, and typical of uh, Hornady VMAX loads. And I'm also using the Spear Hollow Points. Now, I've been having a lot of luck with Hollow Points in a couple of the bigger calibers, and uh, I don't mind them. A Spear is an often overlooked projectile, and I don't see why. There's absolutely nothing wrong with them. They've been around for years, and people just bypass them, and I don't know why. 39 grain hollow points. Again, a little flat based, flat based little beastie with a nice, so we can get him in there. There he is, nice little hollow point at the end. So there we go, that's what we're using. Brass is whatever I've got. All my brass is all full length, resized. Um, okay, it gets all polished and cleaned and, and everything's, everything's sweet about brand. I don't really care, I don't really care. So um, there we go, that's, uh, that's what we're loading up today. Right now, as is always the case, I'm uh, getting all my load data and I use the ADI hand loaders guide. That's the paper edition. That's, what's that, the number eight edition. That's six or seven years old. And I cross reference that with Nick Harvey's practical reloading manual. That's the 11th edition. That's the latest one of those going around. And again, this is not an old, uh, sorry, not a new caliber. So there's nothing, uh, nothing flash, very little new load data with regard to this caliber and these sort of projectiles. Um, Anything you want to cross check, you can do so uh, on the ADI Powders website. It's it's all that's all pretty much up to date, and it all all with, with the sort of standard calibers that I'm I'm loading, it, it pretty much backs up that, and that's that close to that. It doesn't matter. So um, that's that's where I get all my load done, and I've all, I always use that always as a cross reference, particularly when doing new loads. You just keep just keep things in check, and that'll give you your trim lengths and all that sort of all that sort of business. Now I'll give you my loading disclaimer. When I load ammunition, I load it for me and me alone. I load it for my weapons and it works in my weapons and it 
what if you use the information I give you, it may not necessarily work for you or in the weapons you have. I bear no responsibility for what you load and fire in your weapons, particularly if you want to charge these things up like firecrackers and chuck them at five million miles an hour. You want to do silly things like that, on your head be it. Again, the old saying, there are old reloaders and there are bold reloaders, but there are very few old bold reloaders. So there we go. Right, here we go. 2206 H powder pushing the uh, 32 grain Hornady VMAX at 100 yards through the 204. This is the load we've always used with it. We've found it was the best one. And uh, so I'll side in with that. I sighted an inch high at 100 yards. There's be three shot group. 0.23 of an inch. And if that's not an inch high at 100 yards, I'm not here. So I think we found a winner, first cab off the rank. But we've got some loads to test, so we're here, might as well do it. We've got uh, 28 grains, we've shot 0.76 of an inch. Like, still not foul at all. That's, that's by no means foul. That's fine. So you'd be happy enough to shoot that, I would imagine. We'll just cock the camera down a bit. Now we've gone to 28 and a half grains. 0.54 of an inch. That's um, nothing wrong with that either. That, that's quite fine. And we've gone to our maximum load, a 29 grain load. That's uh, in the book, that's a compressed load and that's pretty much high tide in the, in the cartridge. That's up there. Um, we shot 0.43 of an inch with that. So you would, you, if you had to, <coughs> pardon me, if you had to, you could shoot any one of those, any one of those all, you, without issue. Those two in particular, 27 and a half and 29, you'd shoot them with, with all confidence, but that, that one's, it, none of these are foul. You'd be fine with all of those. So that, that's a good start, good start. Now we did the uh, we did the um, we did the uh, spear hollow points the 39 grade spear hollow points. We're about halfway through it, and the trigger packed it in. Don't know why. So we got the trigger we get the trigger fixtures. It's a bit of shit. We got it cleaned out, and we went again. We went again, and that's what, this was a, a little while later. But we, we went again, and that was that. 27 grains of the 2.06 pushing the 39s. 0.709 of an inch. Not bad. 27.5, the same charge of powder. And these are four shot groups too, by the way. I don't know why I loaded fours, but I did. The other ones were threes, these are fours. So that's two little clusters of two there at 709, 0.709. So nothing wrong with that. We've gone out here to 27.5 grains, same charge of powder, just a different projectile. We've shot 0.393 of an inch. And all across the top there, so that's, that's fine. They've all held together, that's beautiful. So that's, that's our winner there, I'm thinking. We come down here to 28 grains and our trigger packed it in again. So we've got three of our four shots done there. That was starting to open up again. And of course, 28 and a half. Uh, uh, that 28, by the way, is a maximum load. And we, we went uh, 28 and a half as a maximum plus point, you know, half a grain. And we got no shots on that one at all. So um, that was starting to open up. So. I think maybe it didn't. They don't like it and chuck super fast, so we'll uh, we'll leave that at there. So I'm think I'm thinking you've got two projectiles. That's not foul. Twenty seven is not foul. So Twenty seven and a half. You've got two projectiles with the different projectiles with the same charge of powder shoot pretty much exactly the same. So winner winner chicken dinner as far as I'm concerned. You've you've got your there's your two loads for the. Uh, for the rifle you can have, but you could probably probably also shoot that one. So we've found probably any anywhere you like between four and four and six good loads for this rifle. Uh, just just a little bit of range testing. So you know, and you don't need to go through a million different types of projectiles. You're just throwing you know, money away. You know, we've we've got a couple of loads we can use. You keep all this data and you keep all your film records, etc., and you can run them off there. So. Uh, I'm happy with that, we'll, uh, we'll put this one to bed. Rightio, whether it be Vanguard 204, uh, done and dusted. And to say I'm happy with it is the understatement of the year. A little bit of load testing and I've got anywhere from three or four, to ending up to six loads that are quite shootable. And um, as we started at the beginning, you gotta have a number of loads up your sleeve for the simple fact, you just can't, you, there's gonna be instances where you just can't get stuff. And that's the way the world is now and it's not gonna change for a very, very long time. So um, I'm not gonna redo those uh, 39 grade high points again. It showed where it wants to be. We'll just walk away from it and be happy with what we've got. 
As far as this uh, trigger's gone, what, I'm, what I've done is I've gone out and I've bought a Timney, uh, a Timney trigger, and my next video I'm gonna do a tutorial on how to, insert, uh, how to install the Timney, and we're gonna go, and we just have a quick shoot with it, we're gonna side it in again with the 32 grainers, the 32 grain VMAX, and then we're gonna do a couple of groups with the 32 grain VMAX and the 39 grain spear hollow points. And they're the two uh, projectiles that seem to, seem to like shooting. We'll do that and that'll be done and dusted. That, that, that'll be our load development and we're, we're fine. 204 done. So there we go. So uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got uh, something out of it. I, I always enjoy, enjoy making these things and I really do enjoy load development. Um, just see where you can take things and where things go. And it's, it's quite interesting. It's quite interesting to, to say the least. So if you did like it, give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel, that'll be really good. Um, always looking for subscribers. Any questions, comments, more than welcome. So uh, I'm gonna end this one a bit differently tonight. Um, I lost dad last week. Um, he's been my, my shooting partner, my guide, mentor, whatever, whatever cliched word you wanna put since forever. He introduced me to shooting. He took me out on my first big shooting trip. Uh, let me have my head at clay target shooting and all, went all over Australia doing that um, to varying degrees of success um, and, and we were still up we were still going out on shooting trips up until last year and he's uh, up, up until he was uh, just shy of his 87th birthday um, we're hoping for one more trip but unfortunately it wasn't to be and uh, I'm going to dedicate this one to him see this is one of his old guns one of his, one he really liked and um, I hope I've done him proud I hope he uh, and I've, I've, uh, he gave me the, gave me all the guns and he said just look after the friggin' things. That's not an issue, not a problem. So um, in signing off, I say, cheers, Dad. We'll take the next trip. Unfortunately, you won't be there. See you, mate.